Thanks for checking in again with us on I Am Second Day. It's been amazing today to see all the seconds who have joined us here at the Hope Center for interviews or just to say hi. Jim Monroe, the Scruggs, we heard from our For King and Country friends. But coming up next, we get to hear from our good friend, Don Wickstrom, the fastest pastor himself. If you don't know Don's story, then you should check out our mini documentary from last year called Chasing Hope, which centers on how Don, after a cancer diagnosis, embarked on a bucket list journey to finish the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb road race as he battled the disease. From that project has come a ministry partnership with Don in which we are collaborating with him called the Chasing Hope Tour. Interviewing Don today is I Am Second's contributing writer and friend, John Seidel. Take it away, John. Hey, thanks so much, Jeremy. Um, Don, I, I don't know if I'm second knew what they were doing when they put us uh, uh, us two together. Two good old country Wisconsin boys right. uh, down here in Texas. Now uh, we could probably just go for go for a couple hours just talking about it. Packers and you know other stuff. But <laughs> Wisconsin's an amazing amazing state. Yeah, I got a front row seat to your story, um, and it is absolutely incredible. And I think there's a lot of incredible things that have happened since then, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I think I just want to start out by asking like, what has life been like since Chasing Hope came out? Oh man, it's like, that's kind of what it's like. No, seriously, um, it's been a roller coaster, but obviously the film that I Am Second put together is amazing. It's an incredible film. And it does a good job telling the story and highlighting our story around Pikes Peak. Uh, what I didn't realize was <laughs> the impact it would have and what that would mean for my life and for ministry and reaching people with the gospel and those who know the gospel with hope and encouragement and being able to just uh, see the hope of Jesus Christ lived out in people's lives and, and be able to travel the country and share our story, which is really just the story of what God is doing through us uh, through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Maybe just fill everyone in on exactly, I mean, you have kind of, you have a tour now. I tell everybody my story is not special, mm. but I think what makes it special is it's everybody's story. Everybody's had a time in which they've been beat down or they've come across a health diagnosis, cancer, like such as mine, uh, where they felt hopeless, where maybe they adapted the world's identity and everything. I was in a school in Colorado and I just saw the impact ad for students. You know, I got done speaking and, um, all of a sudden there was this long line of students and we were there for two and a half hours crying with kids, praying with kids and students and teachers and faculty. So then we came up with this idea like, why don't we continue to take this to uh, schools, churches, um, conferences, youth groups, uh, business events, uh, and, and, and a bunch of other things. We've done car shows, <laughs> we've done autoramas, things like that, and it's just been incredible. And, and when able, I, I bring Van Reeves with me as well, and, and it's just had a profound impact. I'm, I'm really humbled and touched because I, I don't feel adequate doing this, mm. <laughs> but I feel it's where God's called us. I wanna get to some of the incredible stories that you've uh, encountered as a result of what God has been doing with, with you and, and, and the film. There's two stories I've had almost identical like this. And I'd got done speaking and this girl came up and, and you know, she, she kind of walked with a limp, kind of came up and she just looked at me and she looked a little rough, I'll be honest, and she just started to cry. But we started talking and, and she, once she got over crying, we could start understanding each other. Um, she told me, she says, well, I was gonna commit suicide today, but I decided to come today to this event. Yeah. Well, about two and a half years ago, um, my mom invited me up to the top of our apartment complex. I'm gonna try not to cry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, try, um, I'm gonna try not to cry either. <clears throat> she's like, I can't live with you anymore. I don't want you anymore. And she shoved me off the top of this apartment complex um, over six stories tall. And the girl landed and she survived. And she obviously had to rehabilitate. Um, took her about two years to learn how to walk. I met her two and a half years after this. And she told me, she says, I just feel like nobody wants me. She says, I felt so helpless, like nobody wanted me. She says, you know, my mom didn't want me. The system don't want me. And she just kept going through. And she says, I realized today through your story, like there is hope. God can use me. I'm not, I'm not broken because I'm busted up. Mm. I'm broken because I'm not, I don't know Jesus. Mm. And so we talked about what it meant to know Jesus, to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And she accepted Jesus right there. And it's, it's been amazing. It's been, it's been fun to follow her journey now and how God's using her. We really did uh, just realize 
the tour was worth that right there. Yeah. And, and we just have so many stories, like there's so many hurting people, whether it be students or adults, there's so many people hurting out there, Christian and non-Christian, and, and we can first lead them to the biggest hope we have, which is salvation through Jesus Christ. I think that story lets them know like, God's more than our circumstances. And, and I think the biggest message I always try to give people is the world will tell us everything that happens to us is to our detriment. If I lost someone, it's to my detriment. If I went through cancer, it's to my detriment. But what God says, he says, listen, because I gave you Jesus, I will give you the strength to endure. When you don't think you can, I will uphold you. And secondly, I will not waste one tear, one broken heart, one lost soul. I will use them all for the good and for my glory. Any other stories that really stand out to you from the tour? And this girl came up to me and we were talking and, uh, this, there was a young man that was next to me and I could just see he was getting antsy. And so I finished talking to this gal and, and it was a good talk. And I just looked at him and I just held out my arms. And he's, I don't know, kid must've been six foot six, probably 250, he's a linebacker, bro. <laughs> and he just fell into my arms and I just held him. And he just starts crying. And he says, man, I, I had no hope until I heard your story today. He says, you know, I just found out um, my grandma died of cancer not too long ago. I just found out my dad has cancer. I think he said his mom has cancer, his aunt had cancer, just this long line of things. And then he was telling me about some other situations of abuse that he was subject to. And the one guy that had abused him just got out of jail. And he said, you know, I came here wrestling with, you know, why, why is God doing all this? You know, why? And he said, he says, why is God punishing me? And he said, then I sit there and listen to your story and you had me realize that God doesn't punish us, he carries us. Mm. He doesn't punish us, he pursues us. Mm. And, and, I, and he says, I just realized like, I'm gonna get through this. Yeah. I'm gonna get through this. And so I think we just hear heartbreak after the heartbreak of that. You know, we've met a lot of people who have battled things, uh, you know, abuse, uh, depression, anxiety, suicide, um, you know, loss of identity. Mm. And, and, and it's been tremendous to see how those things turn because of a simple story brought through from I am second, right? Yeah. And and I'm, I'm telling you, I think, I think we counted 114 people who admitted to us they were gonna commit suicide either that day or the next day that no longer did. And that's even just within, I think I think we were kind of doing a little bit of the math within the last like six months or six so months. since, so in, in, in six months, 114 people, right, have ad admitted like this saved my life. It, it's shocking to me. You know, as we kind of wrap up here, I think what what is your message to those people who may be watching this or maybe someone's gonna share this? Number one is he knows what you've gone through. He's He's gone through horrible things himself. He had his very creation turn on him. That's number one. Number two is there is hope. You know, we can hope for a lot of things in life. Everything we hope for, the new job will bring me happiness, the new girlfriend, the new husband, uh, the new house, right? The new car. These are all things that we hope that will bring us hope, but they're never realized, yeah. right? Because they fade. But Jesus Christ is the only hope, number one, that we can realize. And the hope that we have in eternity with the heavenly Father through him forever will be realized. It's Jesus Christ in him alone. Yeah. And so that's the advice I'd give is no matter where you're at, you're not too far gone. No matter how far gone you think you are, you're not out of his reach. And no matter how low you are, guess what? It's a valley that he can help you climb out of however far down we think we are, right? He is there to pick us up. And so I hope that's encouraging to you guys watching today. But listen, thank you uh, for joining us and, and um, really appreciate all, all that you're doing. So um, uh, Christina, I wanna send it back to you as we kind of wrap this up. Don represents the type of relationship we have with I Am Second. He was touched by our films and ministry, reached out to us for tools and resources, he used those tools and resources as he conducted his ministry. He shared his story with us, and then we gladly shared it with others. And he is now taking action on his own to share the gospel through the Chasing Hope Tour. And as he said, all the while financially supporting our ministry, hashtag viewing to doing. And if we had a mic, I think we'd just drop it right there. <laughs> exactly. And we'd like to walk alongside all of you in a similar manner, ministering with you as Jesus works in your life. Can we start that today? Just take the first step. Maybe share an I'm Second film or tell someone your story, your testimony. Don't know how to do that? 
Then go to the Live Second section at IamSecond.com and click on Share Your Story. You'll get some tips on how to share your own testimony and tell it to someone in 30 seconds or less. Or perhaps taking action right now means supporting I Am Second financially with a one-time or reoccurring gift. And you can also do that at IamSecond.com where you simply click or tap the Give button anywhere you see it on the site. Whatever it means to you, do it today here on I Am Second Day. There's still time to get in on the action and be part of something that is bigger than yourself. Thanks for being part of this movement.